Ah, fantastic. We are live. This is very exciting. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to our Driving Responsible Business uh, as part of the Aston Business School Leadership Essential Series. Uh, this is actually my first one to join, uh, which is very exciting. So it'd be, uh, it'd be great to kind of see the content for today. Uh, and thank you very much for joining. So I'm just going to cover a bit of a, a welcome. Ah, perfect. Thank you very much, Grace. Um, so yeah, just a quick introduction. So uh, my name is Mark Kipwell. I am the president for Future Faces. Uh, for those of you that uh, don't know me, and obviously we've had we've had lots of new members join over the last couple of months, which is really exciting. Uh, so if you've not met me before, I work on LMJV. So that's part of the enabling works for Area North for HS2 at the moment. Uh, and I'm delighted to welcome Natalie Ormrod, uh, from the Aston Business School. She's one of their senior lecturers in marketing. Um, she's going to be speaking to us for about half an hour um, around driving responsibility, uh, and I'm I'm really excited. Uh, we will, if you've got any questions, please type them into the chat box, uh, and then I'll capture those, and we will do a 10-minute Q&A at the end of the session. So we'll give Natalie a chance to kind of get into her flow, uh, and then we'll ask questions at the end. Um, and then I will close out at about 3.15. Um, but just before we start, I was just going to pick up on uh, uh, the next slide, which is uh, some of the support. So uh, as I'm sure you guys are all aware, Obviously, COVID-19, particularly in the news at the moment around the financial support that is uh, available and a lot of information is coming out for an awful lot of different sectors. So just a reminder that the wider Greater Birmingham Chamber of Commerce, uh, particularly Henrietta Breeley and her team uh, in policy, lots of information, lots of whittled down, uh, easy to read. So just to let you know, you've got the hashtag GB Chamber Chat every Monday and Thursday for about an hour. So if you've got any questions there, feel free to send them over onto Twitter. I suspect if you've got a question to ask, someone else may feel uh, that they've got the same question as well. We've got a lot of member to member offers uh, and some networking Zoom sessions happening over the, the next couple of weeks. Um, also lots of support around COVID, lots of support uh, around webinars. And actually it's really interesting to see beyond COVID-19 uh, that the Chamber of Commerce are still doing around the clean air zone that is likely to impact Birmingham over, certainly when that starts to happen kind of early 21. Um, and of course, the big B word, uh, Brexit. So that is still a key issue for lots of businesses. So lots of useful webinars. Uh, they've got helplines and phone. Um, and actually just as part of their lobbying and campaigning and advertising, uh, if there's something interesting that you want the Chamber of Commerce to know about, feel free to let us know. Uh, and then they've got look, thought leadership content on their website, lots of really useful stuff. Uh, and actually the, the Chamber link that is now uh, electronic at the moment. So uh, lots of useful articles in there. And then lastly, just some specific dates for you on the last slide. Um, which I can't move, unfortunately. Ah, oh, brilliant. Uh, and then, so we've got uh, Monday the 13th is the next Chamber chat. Um, there's the Sutton Coalfield uh, Chamber talk accounting. Um, we've got more Chamber chat on the Thursday and a virtual speed networking session later on in that day as well. Um, and something for Future Faces specific is we've got Law Beach um, from uh, doing some yoga on Friday the 16th of July, uh, slightly more relaxed than some of the Gymshark sessions that we've had. So I'm looking forward to something a bit less sweaty. So that should be good. Um, <laughs> and then we've got coaching for business advantages uh, next Friday as well. And I'll plug it now very quickly, but I'll almost certainly mention it at the end. We have our deadline as well for the Future Faces Awards. Um, so that's going to be on the 28th of August. That's our big Future Faces Awards. I, I've just done a video talking about that today with some more details. But the deadline for the entries is the 31st of July at 5 p.m. We've got lots of categories. We pride ourselves on kind of trying to cover every sector in Birmingham. But actually, really excitingly, this year is we are also doing apprentices. So uh, book on. It's free this year, free for absolutely everybody. Get your applications in nice and early. And also, if you'd like to uh, 
because of kind of the, the situation we're currently in. We're also taking kind of 90 second videos as applications as well. I'm going to finish talking and I'm going to swap over to Natalie. Uh, but just a reminder, if you've got any questions, put them in the chat function and I'll ask them at the end. Uh, over to you, Natalie. Thank you very much, Mark. Um, so hello, everyone. Uh, I'm delighted to be here today to talk to you all. Uh, I would like to thank um, especially the Greta Birmingham Chamber of Commerce and the Future Faces as well for inviting me. Uh, thank you very much. So here we are. Let's talk about uh, driving responsible business. So I am Natalie Omrod and uh, I'm a senior lecturer in marketing uh, at Aston University, which I joined in September 2018. And I'm also the prime director for ABS, the Aston Business School, uh, which stands for Principles of Responsible Management Education. And it is linked uh, to the Global Compact Initiative. So I'll talk a little bit about that later. Uh, but here we go. Let's start. So is it going to work? It works. Brilliant. Right. OK, everybody. So. Um, our planet faces, you can read that quote for yourself, but I mean, obviously at the moment, we've got some uh, huge challenges in front of us. So economic, social and environmental. And basically it's not new. Uh, a lot of sustainability initiatives have started way, way back, decades ago. Uh, people have been warning us with all the signs of um, environmental disasters, obviously with climate change that we can see now, but also social uh, differences, gaps between uh, various communities and various countries. None of this is new. And yet, what are we doing about it? Well, um, the Global Compact was funded to that effect. And the Global Compact is a United Nations initiative, uh, which basically um, reigns for, uh, is, is, um, has been created for, for everybody, all the companies in the world, to basically showcase their good practices and how they can improve the world we, we live in. So I'm going to go through all this in my presentation. But... Uh, the Global Compact is extremely important, has gained a lot and a lot of momentum across the years. And if we look at what's happening now with the COVID-19 uh, crisis, we can see how important those values are, you know, are at the moment. And certainly somebody recently was saying to me, you know, what positives can we see out of that crisis? Well, for a start, I wish it had never happened. So that, that's baseline. Uh, but if we want to look at some positives coming out of it, or obviously communities have gathered around together and we have seen a lot of fantastic initiatives and very often, you know, led from the grassroots, led from the communities themselves, not only social communities, but also uh, company communities, companies getting together and the role of social media there has been absolutely phenomenal. We've also seen companies embracing new ways of deliveries, uh, new modes of thinking, thinking outside the box. Uh, because at the end of the day, uh, for many of them, many of the businesses out there, it's been a case of survival or not. And obviously, we know that that is going to be the case for the months to come. So what can we do uh, about this? So as you can see, I have put some examples there on the side and all those photos are taken basically from the British uh, economy. So, yes, we know that unemployment is going up and it's going to go even further up. So what can we do and um, support mechanisms will need to be in place there? Um, then we know that um, in terms of social uh, problems, homelessness is again growing. And this is a, a dreadful, dreadful tragedy. I was listening um, yesterday, actually, to a programme saying how many families were actually displaced across across the country, um, you know, the uh, di distance from, from the families. And, and that needs to be addressed. It is a, this is at the core of the debate we're looking at at the moment. And also, you know, the, all those uh, climate problems we've had. And, and you can hear my accent is French and uh, uh, the French economy, what's happening in France is also very comparable to what is happening here, uh, certainly in many countries uh, across Europe. So we need to think about it and we need to look at opportunities and how how we can think in finding solutions. But more to the point, it's not about reinventing the wheel. It's about making the best use you can of what is around you and to try to find new ways and to support one, one another. Okay, so I've put there as well, you see the 
prime principles for responsible management education because prime is an offshoot of a global compact because after the financial crisis of 2008 um, some um, pointed the finger to the business schools, saying that we were not preparing our graduates sufficiently well uh, to tackle the world out there. Yeah, fair enough. So anyway, so after this, uh, sustainability, which was already at the core of what we were teaching, was that I've, always, I've always included it in my lectures, it's not new, as I said to you before, but now sustainability is embedded in all the curricula of many, many universities across the world so that we can really prepare our students to, to look at this because the Global Compact is a worldwide agenda. So you've got to be ready for that as well. Um, so let's have a look. I'm talking too much. Starting the next one. OK, so if we look at the world ecological footprint, then yes, there is a problem. Um, we don't have two planets. Uh, we don't have two planets and a half. So something needs to be done. And as you can see, that crossover uh, was basically, you know, 2005. So we need to do something very, very quickly. But how can people listen? Because, you know, you, uh, you talk, you talk to your customers, because obviously I'm going to take a stance, a business stance on this. You talk to your customers, you talk to people about it, everybody's saying, yeah, 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 what is happening? So at some point, people have got to hear and they've got to listen that basically this is what we're looking at now. And as, as much as the COVID-19 situation has highlighted the importance of scientific knowledge in the medical field, well, it's about time we really, really pay attention as well to the knowledge, scientific knowledge of the environmentalists, because this is where we are. So we've got to hear us, to hear them. And basically what is going to be the role of the companies there as inclusive communities, you know, including um, actors within their communities. A, a business is not something dropped in the community. A business can only grow from its community, from its staff, from its customers, from its different stakeholders. And again, I'll talk to you about that in a minute. OK, so let's move on. So, triple bottom line, and I hope you're not going to say, oh, for goodness sake, here we go, she's a flipping lecturer, we're going to have theory. Well, we've got to understand theory, but, you know, we've got to make it fun, and that's what I want to do. So, here we go. We've got to look at that triple bottom line. So, again, that's not new. That's Elkington in 1998, and then since, the model has been redone and redone and redone and redone, and there you go. It's being developed. That's research, and that is great to look at. So, at first, we only started with people, planet, profit. Okay, so that was the seminal model. That's what we started with. But now, this is really expanding because that's what we've got to look at. As I said earlier, a company is embedded within its community and can only grow from that community. Well, it's the same here. Gradually, we need to look at the bigger picture especially with the internet now we're looking at the world this is our window in the on the world we're no longer looking at the at the street outside our door if we're a business we're looking at the world so if we look at that we look at sustainability here in the middle and first of all companies need their staff and the staff the personnel their employees well, they need to be talented, they need to be skilled, they need to be trained to their needs. So we're looking at social progress here, because otherwise you won't have the right people to recruit to work in your company. OK, so we're looking at education, community outreach, human rights, diversity. And certainly diversity is a major problem, at the, not problem, sorry, major issue at the moment that needs to be tackled. And again, that's everywhere. So with Black Lives Matter, we see this, we see that in terms of many different uh, areas where basically, you know, you, you've, you've all read in the press at the moment, you know, the notion of institutional racism. So that needs to change. And we need basically to make it work, to make the best use and to give the best opportunities once again back to our community, because there will be the people working with us, for us, 
and for society at large. And then if you look basically at the environmental stewardship here, then again, we're looking at clean air, we're looking at reducing emissions, minimizing waste. And again, it's all about supporting society and supporting workers, because without a healthy, committed society and workers, you're not going to go very far. So therefore, all this is absolutely linked, intertwined. And then the economic growth will come from this. So basically, we're looking at job creation, skills enhancement, local economic impact. And I think there is a drive to back to local uh, and then social investments. And you can read the same, you know, all of this for yourselves. We're looking about environment, health, safety. We're looking about resource efficiency, life cycle management, growth enhancement. And that is my point, because a lot of companies sometimes will, well, often will say to you, okay, okay, sustainability, but that's going to cost me money. Well, it might in the short term, and yet we will see that there's already a lot of things being done that don't cost nothing. But in the long term, this is a profit center. It's not a cost center. And what we need to make companies aware of as well is that in the latest student survey, the NSS National Student Survey, 80% of the graduates want to see sustainability on, as one of the, you know, the top topics to, to them because they've got it, they've understood, it's their future. And I've got two young men at home as well, my boys, and they know it, it's their future. And, and me as a parent, this is my responsibility to act towards this as well, okay? So, we go back. We continue. Here's the UN Global Compact Agenda 2030. And this is an agenda that to date, and I checked again the figures this morning, 157 countries have signed up to. And the UK has signed up to that agenda and has committed to that agenda. So as a company working in the UK, therefore, you need to embrace those principles as well, because they are governmentally led. OK, so principle one, two is about human rights, principle three and is four, five and six. And you know what? I'm going to put my glasses here uh, is about labor standards. And then you've got seven, eight, nine environment and principle 10 anti-corruption. And this will have an impact on everything. If I take the last one, for instance, 10, you know, we're looking at the modern act slavery. We're looking at tackling tax evasion. We're looking at all of those which are fundamental in our society again, because basically it's about looking after the health of our society. If we've got a healthy society, fine. If it's not the case, then we're having problems and how are we going to fix it? And it's not one person, it's the community as, as a whole. So there you go. So I'm moving on. As you can see, and I assume that this, uh, yes, this is recorded. So you could always go back to those links and find out a bit more. I'm, I'm, I'm obviously wary of the time. Um, so this is the Global Compact. We are talking about over 11,000 companies. We're looking, as I said, 157 countries and then over 72,000 you know, public reports. Right, so 75% of large companies across the world report to the Global Compact. Now, you may say to yourself, well, hang on a minute, you know, I mean, do you have to be a large company for that? No, you don't. You can report to the Global uh, Compact. If you're a large company, it means 250 employees and plus. And if you are an SME, 10 employees and plus. Now, some of you will say to, to me, well, hang on a minute, I'm an entrepreneur, I believe in all this, what do I do? Well, I'm going to show you later, because on your website, or maybe, you know, using, uh, joining an organisation, you could report too, but you can definitely highlight on your website what you are doing towards the sustainable development goals, and I'm going to show you that in a minute. But it is also for non-profit organisations, so have a look. You know, have a look at how you can engage with a global compact. It's extremely important and it is hugely attractive to talent. That talent out there, those graduates that you want to grab. And if you are one of those graduates, then get proficient in this. Show a manager that you can do this and that you are interested in this and how you can lead on that as well. So 
if we keep on going. These are the what we call the SDGs, so the Sustainable Development Goals. There are 17 of them. Now, if you look at those, hardly no company will be able to report on all of them, but they are all somehow associated to one another. So the majority of the companies will report on, let's say, three or four of them. And I'll show you in a minute how you can do that. But go back to where you are, who you are, as a company and see what you are doing there. For instance, zero hunger. Lately, have you been contributed to the food bank effort? Okay. If you look at quality education, are you actually you know, enabling your staff to gain further qualification? If you look at reduced inequalities, are you making it you know, a, a, a really strong objective and goal for your company to really, really fight discriminations? Um, if you're looking at economic growth, how have you supported the development of your community recently? If you're looking at responsible consumption and production, are you involved in any waste management? Are you looking at the consumption within your companies, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. So as you can see, everything can be basically interlinked. But the most important thing is to communicate this, this effort to the Global Compact, if you've got the capacity, but also locally to say that this is what you are working for. Because customers today, that's what they want to hear. And I'll go to this in a minute. So this is an example that you will find on the Global uh, Compact website. As you can see, you've got the link there, but that's how to report. So for instance, if you look at your company and you're a manufacturer, then, you know, if you look at your raw materials, you know, how does it affect life on land? Uh, suppliers, you know, how basically are you looking at good health? Do you make sure that, for instance, obviously there is no child labor, you know, involved in your supply chain management? How do you check for that? Do you conduct your audits yourselves? Because as customers, we don't want companies to tell us anymore, oh, I didn't know, oh, oh. I didn't know. No, 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 no. If you make a profit out of it, if you sell a product, it's your responsibility to check it. It's not up to us customer to then go on social media and say, please, you know, show us your transparent uh, policies about it. You know, clean up your act. It's up to you to come out in that very competitive environment and make a difference and say, I for one, I stand for what I'm saying. I'm walking the talk and you will be heard. Your voice will be heard. If you look at the company operations, you can see that here we're talking about good jobs and economic growth. Look at responsible consumption and, pro and pro production, sorry. And then look at clean water and sanitation. So that company in that model is looking at five SDGs and they have plotted it across basically their product line. Now in the company, you're not working in silos, but if you do, you shouldn't, but there you go. So it's a holistic approach to the company. Everybody depends on one another. That's how you work. Of course, I work in marketing. Marketing, marketing is in everything. It's in product, product management, product design. It's in pricing strategies, depending on the population you're going to sell to. It's in the place where are your products or your services available. It's about your process, your customer journey. Uh, it's about your people, your members of staff. It's about your promotional campaigns. It's about everything. So as a marketer, you've got to work with everybody in the company. So there you go. You have a look and you make it a company debate. What is everyone doing well? Because surely if I go back to this, you can identify some of us. So have a look and then start this reflection. Now, engaging with stakeholders is paramount. And that is a theory from, uh, from Freeman. We often, you know, Freeman and Friedman's were always opposed together. Friedman was, you know, the company is here to make a profit. I think it was a bit, you know, um, general, really. Uh, and then Freeman was, no, hang on a minute, we need to engage with our stakeholders. Now, our stakeholders, they are all around us. Some of them we know very well. Some of us sometimes we don't pay sufficient attention to. So if you look at the core there, so you're the firm. But obviously, you're going to engage with your primary stakeholders. So what messages or what actions are you doing to benefit your communities, your customers, your employees? Because remember, an employee who's not feeling well is not going to go far. Suppliers, what are you doing to support your suppliers? Uh, 
So simple actions as, for instance, paying them on time. Financiers, how do you engage with your management, you know, with your bank managers? How do you engage with them? How do you talk to them? And then you've got the secondary stakeholders, well, the government, the competitors, your advocate groups, special interest groups, and the media. And all the stakeholders are going to look at you, but the most important thing here as a priority is you to look at them and how you're engaging with them. And what can you do in terms of sustainable corporate social effort to engage with all of those stakeholders in a meaningful manner? So, for instance, some companies are releasing their staff one day a month to engage with local charities or local communities, local groups that need some effort. I live in Cheshire. In Cheshire, we've got Cheshire Connect, but it is actually a charity that is embedded across the UK, as far as I'm aware. And basically, this is a brilliant idea. They went to charities and they found out very quickly that you could throw as much money as you wanted to charities uh, and it threatened its course. This is not sustainable long term. You've got to do something better. So now that organization, Cheshire Connect, is connecting companies with charities to give them a day a month, half an afternoon every two weeks or whatever they can afford to then train them in managing accounts in managing social media. And that is long term and that is beneficial and that is sustainable. And that is the core of our debate today. So if you look at this, you could say to yourself, well, hang on a minute then, what can I do then in terms of bringing value, you know, in terms of enhancing the cap capabilities of my corporate social responsibility? Because CSR is really company driven. Sustainability is the global picture. So how can you really contribute there? Well, if you look at your employees, you know, build your employer reputation, attract talent, be the preferred choice for those students. Customers, create really brand value, tell them why they should choose you. And obviously being sustainable today is something they will hear. You know, how can you really engage, expand your customer loyalty and the same with your community, okay, and your environment and your investors, your regulators and your suppliers, okay, as you can read for yourself here. What can you do really to do it? Now, again, you may not do it everywhere, but it's about starting somewhere. And I hate it when people say to me, oh, could you know, it's too much. No, you start somewhere. Everybody starts somewhere, one step. And if today for me, it's for you, then going back and identifying one SDG, I'm delighted. This is it, you know, goal accomplished. So this is where the conversation needs to start, especially in the current climate. So next slide. You are probably aware of this if you were a student, it's Carol's Pyramid. So basically, as a company, you start with being, you know, economic, obviously, you want to be profitable, you want to survive. Legality is about obeying the law, so that's where you should be. Everybody is there. And then you move on. So are you then going towards ethicality, you know, avoid harm? And then, obviously, where you want to be is at the top there, being seen as a philanthropic company within your community. But again, you may achieve that well in some parts of the companies, less well in other parts of the company. Once again, it's about bringing everything together. It's about consolidating. That's what we want to achieve. So I've got some great examples there. I love those. TerraCycle, you're probably aware of TerraCycle. Now, TerraCycle is really partnering with a lot of companies out there to look at waste that is not really recyclable. Um, so at Aston University, we've partnered with TerraCycle with walkers for crisps because students like crisps, so do I, uh, and that's it. So basically, the companies engaging in those schemes are getting recognition for that. And they, me, I've got a list of all the people in my community uh, taking those crisp bags, those bread bag. I think Warburton is part of it. I think, oops, I hope I've not given the wrong name. You know, and that's it, you know, um, for your contact lenses, the cases or whatever, you know, some, for instance, uh, without saying the brown boots uh, where I live, you know, takes them all back and recycle them. So that's great. Now, 
Fairphone I like. I don't know if you know Fairphone. It's absolutely brilliant. Fairphone was uh, created from the concept of inbuilt obsolescence, which means that basically you've got the product and it goes. So if you've got uh, one of those very, very um, known brands, phone, uh, iPhone, you will know that you can't open them. So basically you're at the mercy of a company. If it fails, there's nothing you can do and you've got to pay for the repair. Fairphone approached it differently. They said, well, hang on a minute. I want to stay in control of what I, I buy. And also I want to make sure that whatever goes in that phone, I'm happy with. So Fairphone strategy was about, you know, I mean, you know that in your phone, you've got a lot of minerals and some precious minerals, obviously, there's a lot of silver, gold and all that. So they made sure that, first of all, the minerals they were sourcing to make of their phones came from non-conflict areas, because, as you know, gold mining is financing lots of conflicts across across the world. So first of all, they made sure of that. Then they made sure that the miners that they were recruiting were properly kitted, uh, good health and safety, et cetera, et cetera. That's what we need. That was is normal. That's flipping human rights. And that company is growing and growing and growing because people feel, well, hang on, we're not wasting because electronic waste is massive, obviously, as you know. Um, people are actually, you know, can repair and we are going more and more into that culture of repairing rather than, you know, throwing. Uh, and that's it. So that's a great company. Have a look at them. They're brilliant. And check their YouTube as well account because they've got loads of brilliant videos on how they engage with their local communities and uh, all this and their suppliers. And then Greystone. Now, Greystone Bakery is fantastic. Now, I was really, really privileged to, to visit them during a conference in, in, in New York. Now, what, and that was a conference about Prime. What they do there is that they had that community outside New York, mostly a black community, no access, no access to anything. So no transport, nothing. Totally isolated, brushed away. Obviously, very poor social economic conditions, um, miserable. That company decided to set up there. And what they said is, okay, fine we're going to do an open recruitment strategy. So basically, you turn up in the morning, if you've got a job, no questions asked, you walk in, you do the job, and that's that. That company is massively successful. They've paired up with um, Ben & Jerry's. Um, you know, if you if you have their ice cream with cookies in it, they're made there. Uh, and basically, that's it. The entire community has totally changed totally changed and now the massive benefits we can see is educational level is that now the children are going to university are attaining much more if you want to look at that because you know making people redundant is flipping expensive recruiting people is flipping expensive that is a model now of course you're saying to me well, what if people didn't behave if they didn't behave they left that was that was basically the the thing open open hiring is that we don't want to know what happened to you, you come and work. But then if you don't work to our standards, you're out. The majority stayed. The majority grabbed, grabbed that chance. That is a, a, a light, you know, an enlightening example. Have a look at what they do. It's brilliant. And a lot, a lot of uh, papers, research papers, business analysis, case studies have been done. So you'll find much more about that. It's great, great. So you see, those companies are great. So what do we need then? Us, actors. To change well this is what we need in terms of sdg leadership and i've put there a lot of little pictures on the side because those pictures are happening now and if you're a company you're seeing all those movements and you're saying well i've got my i've got my part to play here whether i like it or not i've got to pay my part to it. because i live on this planet and i'm in that society and this is what i hear so i've got to do something about it so the leadership that we're looking at is basically intentional so an integral, deliberate part of a company's strategy, holistic view, the big picture. Ambitious. It's about really going for it long term. It's about walking the talk. Consistent. It's about giving that message out there and again, living by it. A collaborative. It's all about partnerships. We, 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 we must all work together. We must all work together. So it's about, you know, identifying supportive mechanisms and working with one another. And then accountable, 
very, very important. It's about the transparency of your operations and your risk management as well. So obviously entrepreneurs out there have got a fantastic part to play there. And as you all know, there is a huge growth in social entrepreneurship. And I really believe so much in the generation coming forward. They've got it right. Okay. So we are now talking about consumer social responsibility. Because it's not all rosy, you know, we're all like going, yeah, we'll go for it. No, it's not like that. Because obviously, you'll have 85% of people saying to you, ah, oh, we don't want sweatshop labor. Oh, we're not. Uh, yeah, but what do they do then? Do What do they do? Are we talking about responsibilizing them, saying, okay, your shirt is, I always say that to my students, I always say to them, if you buy a t-shirt one pound, bearing in mind that it's been designed by somebody, the cotton, raw material, it's been treated and everything, it's been made, it's been sewed, it's been dyed, it's been sent across the world in a plane, it's been taken from the airport back to the shop, somebody in the shop put it on the railroad, one quid. And I said to them, well, if you're not paying for it, somebody's paying for it. Are you happy about that? So there you go. You know, are we talking about deceleration, especially, you know, fast fashion? There's a huge debate in fashion about this. Then 99 people, 99 percent of people are against homelessness, homelessness. Ooh, no, sorry. But do they are they really prepared to go out there on the street and do something or are they just donating because they don't really want to engage with this? So, again, you know, me, myself, I'm not a saint, but these are the questions we've got to ask ourselves. You know, how far are we prepared already to go? 50% of those who recycle don't believe in climate change. Now, that I find difficult, but there you go. So, but there's a behavior cap there. So, it means that as companies, we need to reinforce that message massively. Okay. And basically, only 40% of consumers trust businesses, government, NGOs, and media. Well, I wouldn't like to be in that position. That needs to change. Now, let me tell you something. The group that they trust the most is the academic, so <laughs> say no more. And then, obviously, we've got to think. So, okay, if we know all this, what I've done before, but if we're still there in terms of customers, then something needs to change. And what do we do? Well, the powerful levers that remain in place are always price and regulations. At the moment, for the majority of the customers, this is what drives change. But hopefully, thanks to the efforts of the companies and all of us, things are going to change and we're going to move towards a different world because there is change happening out there and we need to make it happen. We're all in it. We're all in it because we're on that planet. So we're all in it. So voila, this is my presentation for today. And I hope that you've enjoyed it. And, uh, and I'm happy to take your questions. So thank you very, very much for listening. Thank you so much, Natalie. Can you, just to check, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes. Fantastic. Thank you, um, that was brilliant. And if I can just borrow Hannah Montgomery's comment, uh, your enthusiasm and passion <laughs> for... I think a subject that is both incredibly positive when you hear about the businesses that are doing the right things mm -hmm. and then actually at the same time as a young professional can be very difficult because there's so much else happening right now that sometimes it feels yes. like it ends up at the back burner and actually you know and and sometimes it can be really disheartening um but no thank you so much absolutely fantastic um what You're i'm going to do is give the guys a bit of a chance to see if they've got any questions um yep. but i will take full advantage of having control of speaking uh, and jump in and ask a question myself okay. um firstly love the slide number eight i think where you've kind of just put that that time slide of how do you implement the 17 SDGs because there's a lot yeah. of them and I think sometimes it, it, it seems like a lot and actually being able to line that up in a Gantt chart and get your head around it, I think that's really positive. Um, how perhaps as a young professional maybe joining a new company how do you think would be the best way to perhaps interrogate or or really question a business's kind of corporate social responsibility ar around this because I think there's a lot of greenwashing perhaps or a lot of text on a website yes. but it, it's never any deeper than the website and I just wonder as a young professional I probably find that quite hard to to really get into it with a business. 
Right, okay. Well, first of all, you need to prepare. Uh, that's always, you know, the first thing you need to do for whatever you do, you've got to prepare. So you do your reading, you do your research on the company, you see basically where they stand. Um, first of all, have a look at the, I think I've embedded it somewhere in the, in, in, the, in the PowerPoint, but you've got resources out there to find out who are the companies who are leading there. Um, so if this is uh, an area where you want to join, then you've got great leaders out there, great companies doing their bits there. So yes, I hear what you're saying, Mark. They may do better in some areas than in other areas. I agree with you, nothing is perfect, but we are drivers for change. At a job interview, if a company has started, um, you know, you've checked their website or you've checked their history. So first of all, two things. Um, at Aston, we, we've got a compulsory placement here. So as, as lecturers, we're obliged to go and visit our students. The number of time when I've researched a company, obviously, before I do my visit as well, and I've said, well, they're doing great things there. Where, where is it on their website? Um, so first of all, you know, as at, at an interview, saying to the company, I've seen you done this and that, I can't see it on your website, and I really think that would be valuable. Then you start breaching on that. Now that's probably, you know, entering the debate in a friendly manner because some companies will react by saying, oh, it's going to cost us some money. Actually, they're doing it. They're already doing it. So I think it's by basically making them advocates of what they're on, you know, they're on doing themselves. So I think that's the first thing I would do. Prepare, research, have a look on the Global Compact. You've got the list of all the companies in the UK that are engaged in it. And of course, the world, because, you know, I'm not talking only UK centric here. The world, the world is our oyster these days. Well, for you, um, for you, you know, the new generation. So have a look at those companies. And then I think that Forbes has got a great list of the latest companies. They update it every year as well. Uh, so there is a 2020 list uh, of the top companies as well. And, and possibly like me, you'll be very surprised to find names that you've never heard of. Uh, but I would approach it that way. I would try and say to the company, you know, at the first interview, you don't want to come along and say, oh, I know better. You don't want to do that. Um, you want to say, well, I've seen you've done this. I've seen you've done that. Uh, are you aware of a global company? Fact, I've done this in an assignment. I'm pleased to say that ethical and sustainable marketing is becoming a core uh, in the new program. Whee! So there you go. So you can say as an assignment, I've done this and that could interest your company. Uh, I think this is what we want because as a generation, this is definitely the top agenda. And then also say, you know, you're selling a lot to that population that customer go online research the targeted segments of your company it's very very important look at who they are selling to find what they want and then bring in your number saying oh i've seen that you're selling a lot to that population that population that group is well known for blah 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 what can i do Brilliant, thank you. Uh, and just, uh, I think, picking up from uh, Denise Atkins, uh, I will also definitely be looking at UK brownie stockists for Greyston because I absolutely <laughs> love brownies. Um, we do have we have a question um, from Chris Green. Um, firstly, he said, excellent presentation, uh, and I <laughs> can't agree more. Um, is there a danger that global politicians may browbeat businesses into dampening down and staying quiet about promoting the global impact agenda? I think it's already gone too far for that. No, they can't, they can't. I think that the top players, the leaders are aware of it. So they are going to lead the way. So no, I think we've already gone too far for that. And also, if you look on gov.uk, you go on their website, you will find the agenda 2030, the, the government has, has, you know, has signed up to it. So basically, they're held for it. Now, of course, we know what some of the leaders, and don't stop me on that, uh, in the world, you know, think about this. Uh, but it's about who you sell to. And also, you know, it, for instance, let's go back to, because I said to you, this is not new. This is going in motion. If you remember Verana Plaza, maybe some of you will, in Bangladesh, the dreadful, dreadful, the worst uh, tragedy uh, in the fast fashion industry, uh, when that massive building collapsed, killing over a thousand people, but then obviously making lots of children orphans uh, and disabling a lot of people. So it was an absolute tragedy. Well, some companies didn't really react to that, you know. Social media took over. Social media took over. And I think that social media is becoming a mega player in, in the mix. 
and went on and on and on. Those companies were exposed, they were challenged, they had then to pay, you know, their due and to help the communities because their reputation was at risk. And I think that reputational management is very linked to this as well. Um, so, of course, of course, uh, with my students, you know, we critique that. So, for instance, uh, I give them an assignment where they've got to look at what the company is doing and then search in the media what's happening. So, I always want them to have that critical light on. And, and we look at BP, obviously, you know, that's an obvious one, uh, with deep horizon water, with, you know, we start with the, the, the documentary with them. Okay, fine. So everybody's like, oh, 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 you know. And then once we've done it, debated it, I put immediately, I project uh, the pages of BP in terms of sustainability. And then all the students go, oh, you know, and I said, well, yes. But it's not about going, oh, it's about what do we do? It's about what's going on there. So I remember a student saying to me, well, this is it. I'm definitely going to work for, you know, for BP. And there are lots of great stuff happening at BP, but it's not in every area. So I think it started and I think it's a movement that cannot be stopped at this point. And whatever some, some big leaders out there may think about, they're only elected for a certain amount of time. And I think that change, you know, change has started about 30, 40 years ago and it continues moving. It is definitely moving. Your generation is not going to stop. And your generation are the customers of tomorrow. My boys are not going to stop. They're going to continue as well. That's what they want. And, you know, in marketing, it's all about what people want. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm just conscious of time now because it's about 20 past. Um, so unless anyone has any other questions, I think I'm just going to say thank you again. Um, again, kind of fantastic enthusiasm and passion. Well, thank you. Um, really, really enjoyed that. So brilliant. And I and I, I have no doubt that our Future Faces members have, have really enjoyed that. Um, just one last quick reminder. Um, it is our Future Faces Awards coming up on the 28th of August. So get your applications in by the 31st of July um, and tickets are free. So feel free to book in. Obviously, it's going to be slightly different this year, uh, taking it online, but it will be an absolute blast. But anyway, one last big thank you for your time. Thank Natalie. You. It's hugely appreciated. Um, and I believe we've recorded this, so uh, it will be available in the future. So yeah, thank you so much. And we'll leave you in peace. Cheers. Thank you very much, everybody. All the best for the future. All the best. Bye-bye. Cheers, guys.